Welcome back, folks, to Scripting for Linguists. In this episode, I'd like to answer this question. When calculating frequencies of words in many small text files, how much faster is it to use parallel processing in Rust? We assume it will be faster. The question is, how much faster will it be? In a previous episode linked to above, we looked at parallel processing in Python when we use the pool object and use the map method of that object to um, map a function to each uh, file name and then flatten a bunch of dictionaries. And we also saw in another previous video linked to above that Rust is faster than Python and Julia when calculating frequencies of words in many small files, many small text files. So let's combine those two. Let's get a parallel processing version of our Rust script and see just how fast we can make this bad boy go. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. Again, we're going to be using the Spotify podcast data set. Um, it is a um, data set of podcasts on Spotify that have over um, 100,000 hours of audio, over a billion transcribed words, right? We've used this in our previous videos. And just to look at the results of those previous videos, here are the results of the Python parallel processing. We had a speed up of more than two, a factor of two, 2.3, 2.4 there. We went from a sequential time of about 50 to 51 or 52 seconds down to 21 or 22 or 23 seconds. So a great speed up there uh, when we were running on four, no, excuse me, eight cores. And then on our other previous video, the results of the sequential run through Rust was at about uh, 32 or 33 seconds. So we now want to get these numbers down here. Okay, so let's take a look here. Here is the Rust script. Again, shout out to my son, Seth Brown, who is a computer science major, uh, majoring in software development. He knows Rust really well. And he helped me write this original script. And then uh, what we're looking at now actually is, is uh, this parallel version. So just to explain it real quick, we have one function here that uh, gets all the file names. That's not too, uh, too crazy there. This function here, get freaks file, gets the frequencies of the words in one file and puts them into what's called a hash map, which is like a dictionary in Python or Julia. Okay, and then this other function down here, get freaks in a directory or dir directory, it, what it does is it takes that previous function that gets a, the frequencies from one file, which is saw, and maps it uh, to um, the, um, the file names that we would collect with the get freaks function. And right here, the par, the n2 underscore par underscore iter is the parallel version of the iterator that we will iterate and map this function to each uh, file name that's grabbed from uh, the get files function. And then we collect it up into um, a result object. So this is very much like what we did in Python with the pool object. We mapped a, a function that worked on each file to the list of file names. It's kind of a very similar approach here, um, what we're doing there. And then we flatten the mini. We end up with uh, a vector. The VEC right there is a vector, uh, which is very much like a Python list, a vector in Rust that has um, these hash maps or dictionaries. And then we just flatten that down into one large frequency dictionary here. And what we're doing here is we're doing very much what it's very much like a, a Python get method on a dictionary. We're saying, hey, frequencies, which is a hash map or a dictionary, give me the entry for the current word, or if you don't have it, insert a zero, and then whatever you have, um, add the frequency of the current word to it. Anyway, so it's very much like the get method in Python, that right there. Okay, we don't need to get too in-depth, but we're gonna do 10 trials like we've done in the past. We'll do 10 trials and then get the mean and median times. We're also going to just list out um, a handful of words that I've listed out in previous videos just to make sure we're getting the exact same numbers, the exact same number of word types, and the exact same uh, number of word tokens. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Let's do cargo run release so it does not take the time to optimize. And then we're going to pass in the pathway to this corpus, which on my hard drive is this text files. Okay, here we go. Okay, great, it finished up there. 
Um, and just first thing I want to do is just double check the numbers that we got, just to double check that we're getting the exact same frequency counts. Um, that number right there, number of word types, 2,400, uh, excuse me, 242,527 uh, is the number of word types. And then what, 2.3 almost million um, tokens. That, that seems correct. These numbers all look good. The same as what we got with Python and Julia and our sequential version of our Rust script in the past. And here we have the individual times, um, 16, 14, 14, 13, 13, 13, 13. We have a really long one at 31. Why was that last one really long? Not totally sure why that last one was super long there. Um, but let's look, look at the, the mean and the median times there. So 15.8, I'll round up to 15.8 seconds on the mean. Let me jump over to a spreadsheet here. Our mean was 15.8, did I just say? Yeah, 15.8 seconds on the mean, and the median was 13.7. Let me just double check those numbers real quick. Yep, down here. Yeah. So what do we have here? Let's do a little simple math. Let's take cell C6 divided by cell C7, and we get a 2.1 or so speed up, or 2.4 speed up there. Uh, let me just do a quick little thing of formatting just for the fun of it on the fly here while recording. You guys don't mind, right? Um, yeah, so we see that, yeah, it's about the same speed up, uh, 2.1 or 2.4, but again, there's that really long last iteration. I'm not totally sure at the moment why that happened. So I'm gonna pay more attention to the, the median here because the median is less affected by outliers, right? Uh, 2.4 and 2.4, so this was in Python. And this was in uh, Rust. So we see a very similar speed up as far as um, how much quicker it is. And the take home message here is that we're getting down to like 13 or 14 seconds to get the frequencies across almost 40,000 text files that contain um, 230 million words when we parallelize, parallelize that is our Rust script. So Rust, as we would expect, when we combine Rust with parallel processing, we get the best, the quickest time of all the times that we have seen. Um, so just to refresh, let me go back to, um, let me go back and we can take a look at real quick, some of our previous runs. If you look at Python, we're getting 50 seconds or so. Let me zoom in a bit if I can on this one. Um, 50 seconds with Julia, we were getting, you know, between 70, what, 70 up to 100 seconds, 70, 80, up to 100 seconds there. And then Russ was down at 32. And then parallelizing, parallelizing um, our script here, we get down even farther down into the teens. So let's answer our question. <clears throat> when calculating the frequencies of words and many small text files, how much faster is it to use parallel processing in Rust? Well, from the sequential REST version, it's 2.4 or so times quicker. Uh, in comparison to Python, um, you know, I didn't do this, we can do this real quick as well. Let's do this little simple math with the help of a spreadsheet. Let's take cell, let's take 21 divided by 13.7. It's 1.5 times faster um, in Rust to do this when we um, are parallel parallelizing in Rust and Python. 21 divided by 13.7 gives us 1.5 or so. So the take home message is, yeah, Rust is fast and parallelizing, parallelizing, I cannot get that out correctly, parallelizing uh, programs makes it much faster as we would assume. So the best way that I am currently able to do or have someone, okay, my son help me do with Rust is um, to use Rust in a parallelized version. So thank you so much for joining. See you next time.